I've done a few things to update or try to upgrade the ESC in the Evolve Carbon GT um, and the Bamboo GT. So the first thing that I tried, because I've worked with the Vesk a lot, is to put a Vesk in there. And I used a dual Vesk, 6.6 .6 and 4.2, and it works heaps better. And I'm telling you, it pretty much changes the board. You don't need to do battery upgrade as the first upgrade on this board, uh, it's the ESC. You need to upgrade the ESC. It'll change the way the board writes and it will really help with the battery sag, etc. because you can tailor in your current settings. But the biggest thing with the VESC is um, I think that it's not quite the way that I like to ride. And the way I like to ride is the same as my X-Way or my um, booster board. So um, I wanted that inside of the GT. So that's what I did. I've propped up my off-road bamboo GT and I'm gonna show you what I've changed. So basically inside of it, there's a hobby wing EC. Now this ESC is the same ESC that you see in the AE boards and the WowGos, etc. like that, um, backfire boards, and also in the X-Way. Now, the X-Way is, is different and has been made um, to be a lot better and have more features, but I, we've just gone with the stock standard. Now, um, it's only recently that boards have started coming out that are belt drive that are using it. The X-Way um, Pro is one of those boards. And then you've got the Leaf board, etc. And I'm like, that's it. We need this for the GT line. So I sent them a GT and they um, tested and got the algorithm right to make this board work really well. So I've got one of their remotes. I'm just going to turn that on and underneath here you can see the switch isn't the normal push button switch anymore it's a momentary switch and I'm going to hold that one down and that's paired if you can see on the remote we've got a couple of different um, speed modes so speed mode two, three, and one. So let's really see how it works. So we've got forward and then reverse. It works the same as the booster. It works the same as the booster board and the X-Way, um, X-Way call it free ride mode. Now this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed this ESC into the bamboo GT. Um, the process would be quite similar for the carbon and it is really straightforward. So we have put the same connectors on this ESC as the board takes. So you've got your T connector or your Dean's plug and your MT30 plugs for the motors and then the correct JST plugs to be plug and play. It's already got an aerial with some adhesive, so you can peel the adhesive on, put it on the case where you want it to sit, and then you have your power switch, which will replace the original power switch, and it's quite easy to remove, so then we can thread it through the original hole. This here is a replacement motor that I brought from Board Bumper. It's not an official GT one, but um, it's like for like pretty much with the same motor KV etc. It's not one of the race star ones which have a lower KV. This one's been made at 150 KV to be the same as the Evolve. And the reason why I'm using this is just to demonstrate the, the connectors. So right here um, you can see we've got the MT30 and the MT30 and it can only plug in one way 
and it won't let you plug it in any other way. The hole sensor connector, um, there's a clip on one side and that goes in just like that. And that's the connection of the board. There's nothing else that needs to be changed on this. The only modification that we make is for the switch um, because we have a momentary switch which the on and off is operated through the ESC where the original board it doesn't operate like that um, it has a push button switch and it's operated through the BMS so we're going to set that to be always on and then control the on off using this okay to start the process I'm going to remove the heatsink and the ESC the ESC is attached to the heatsink and at this point we would, don't want to remove so I'm going to start by just removing the four outside screws now the heatsink has um, some adhesive sealant around the edges so you do need to pry that away now as you can see I've just pried the ESC out and it should give you enough exposure to be able to actually remove these plugs you've got the plug for the two motors and a plug for the switch your face wire connectors which you can simply unplug like that and then on the other side you've got the same and then you plug for your UART the BMS which you don't need that's just so you can check each cell voltage um, on your board in this case I'm going to take the battery case off and I'm going to remove the original switch and put in the new switch because I make it a lot neater okay so we need to remove this switch and to remove this switch we need to remove some of the um, hot glue that is surrounding it and then undo the threaded washer to remove that whole switch um, then we can put the new switch in there so I've removed the hot glue it was quite simple with the knife and now I'm going to start undoing the nut Okay. There is a little bit of a flat spot on this which the um, new switch doesn't have so I'm going to use that same knife that I used and I'm just going to scrape that out a little bit. It doesn't need a whole lot out but once I do then I'll be able to put that screw straight in without any problems. Okay so I've got the new button and I'm going to thread it in after I remove the washer and then I'm gonna thread it in and poke it through the hole if I've removed enough of the plastic should go in with a tight fit there's a rubber seal around it which is nice and then I can put that nut back on. Okay, so that's in there nice and secured. Now, there's one thing that we have to do to get power, and that's this red and black two pin connector. Um, that's your on and off switch for the BMS. All we have to do is jump those two wires together and then the VMS and the battery is always on and then the power can be controlled by that momentary switch okay. so I'm just going to pop it into one of the plugs and then into one of the others and then take this and we don't need it so I'm just going to tuck it up 
underneath the BMS under here. Um, you can do the same thing with the UART port because we don't need it. Okay, so now it's looking nice and neat. Um, the last thing we're going to do is connect the power just in case we press the switch um, or we do the switch last but we can start connecting the motors um, to the to the EEC. So I've just placed the EEC on the inside just like this and just leave it sitting there and I'm going to route all the wires outside so then I can put it back on and plug all the wires in later but um, I'm going to plug the switch in while I'm here and connect the antenna cable so it's just adhesive um, just right there um, so then I can get some signal so I'm just putting the battery case back on with the ESC in there okay so I've got the ESC case back on so now I'm going to start plugging in some cables so um, you can always do this before you put the battery case back on I just found it easier doing it like this um, so you start off with the phase and whole sensor wires So I'm going to connect the battery cables and you might get a little, might get a little bit of a spark the first time because um, that jumper cable made the BMS on. Okay, so put the board upside down. We've got the power cable here. I'm going to hold it down until it starts flashing. And then the remote, I'm going to hold that down. It will turn on. And then it starts flashing and that's bound so let's make sure that the motors are spinning the right way they should be spinning backwards and yes um, if you find that they're not spinning the right way you can swap the left motor to the right side of the ESC and that will start working perfectly fine so we're going backwards and forward so now that that's all done, I've got a 3D printed cover which I can put on there, just like this, and that's on Thingiverse. But I'm gonna remove the ESC from the original heatsink and put that back on. Okay, so I removed the ESC from the heatsink and I've put the heat transfer pad back on because I want some heat to be dissipated from the original EC when the winds are blowing 
and I'm going to put this back on, making sure that there's no um, exposed wires or anything that could cause any problems. So that fits on really nice. Just going to tighten up the screws for the um, battery case and then that should be done for this build.